Hello, my name is Anna and I will be presenting my summer 2019 research on the quantitative analysis of polygenic risk score prediction in the Genes for Good cohort. To begin, there are a few background concepts that are needed to frame my research. Polygenic risk scores, or PRS, are generated through summary statistics from a genome-wide association study, or GWAS. A GWAS searches the entire genome for small variations known as single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, that present more frequently in individuals with the disease than in people without the disease. The results of a GWAS are displayed via a Manhattan plot seen on the right. Each point represents a unique SNP, and those with p-values above the genome-wide significant level of 5 times 10 to the negative 8 are considered unique to phenotype positive individuals and are included in the calculation of genetic risk scores. Secondly, we tested the predictive power of our scores in the Genes for Good cohort. This Facebook-generated survey combines survey questions with genotyping and originated at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. PRS are the sum of an individual's disease-associated alleles weighted by estimated effect sizes from a GWAS for a particular phenotype of interest. The equation for calculation is shown on the screen, where I and J are indices for individuals and SNPs, respectively. Beta hat represents the estimated effect size of the jth SNP on the phenotype, and the dosage is the number of risk alleles the individual has for the SNP. My research group used Precise2 software to calculate our scores, and I will explain the details of this software in subsequent slides. PRS matter most for individuals located in the top decile of the PRS distribution. For an individual with a score in the 90th percentile, indicating a heightened risk of disease development, potentially life-saving preventative treatment can be prescribed prior to disease onset. Given that PRS sum an individual's phenotype-associated alleles, we hypothesize that subjects in the top decile of PRS distribution would be at an increased risk of developing the phenotype. In other words, the prevalence of a phenotype will be higher for those with higher scores. In our research, we examined hypertension. First, we located summary statistics from a 2018 GWAS in recent scientific literature. We then filtered the Genes for Good survey data for questions surrounding hypertension and heart disease. Using both command line and R-based computing, we created a binary phenotype file for all 20,000 genotyped individuals in Genes for Good. Next, we ran Precise2 software to calculate a score for each individual in Genes for Good. Precise2 also accounts for redundancies in the data by performing a genetic method called linkage disequilibrium. We then ran a myriad of statistical tests to determine the predictive power of our scores. Most notably, we ran logistic regression to test for an association between PRS and disease presence and K-fold cross-validation and ROC-AUC analysis to determine the predictive capacity of our scores. We then repeated these steps for various models with different combinations of covariates. We found notable association between hypertension and PRS. As you can see, we obtained a very significant p-value of 6.53 times 10 to the negative 14 and an odds ratio of 1.16. We also observed a notable increase in hypertension status between the top decile versus the bottom decile, meaning that high-risk participants had an increased prevalence of disease. This aligned with our hypothesis. We performed five-fold cross-validation and ROC analysis on two models, one including just age and sex, and the other including age, sex, and our PRS. Surprisingly, we found little difference in the average AUCs. The model including PRS performed only slightly better than the model with just age and sex. Our examination of this phenomenon elucidated a key statistical problem in current PRS analysis. Namely, the majority of the population falls at intermediate risk for hypertension, and few are at low or high risk. The individuals in the middle portion all have a relatively equal chance at developing hypertension. Because AUC treats each point in the distribution equally, this limits the ability to quantify the predictive power of PRS. A new metric that emphasizes the predictive power of the tails specifically 
would be ideal. As a whole, tests that focus on the behavior of the majority of the data failed to demonstrate the effectiveness of PRS, which is why our scores didn't increase the predictive power of our model. I hypothesize that PRS, when examined through margin-oriented statistical methods, will prove predictive at statistically significant levels. Thus, the next step in PRS analysis is to modify and adapt current tail-oriented statistical tests to fit the needs of PRS. This will pave the way for clinical application and has the potential to positively benefit the lives of many. Here are the software and studies we referenced during our research.